In this video, I wanna share with you how I use my CNC to make a challenge coin rustic flag. If this is something that you're interested in, then go ahead and stick around. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with the Ethan Pine. And like anything, you can use many, many different tools to be able to get an outcome that is similar or the exact same. So when it comes to making a challenge coin rustic flag, I think the tool that is most commonly used is the router. I only have a palm router and I use that specifically for making my decorative edges such as a round over or a chamfer, things like that. Don't quote me on this, but I think if you were to create the groove in the rack, I think that you'd want a plunge router to get the best output. Regardless, I don't have a plunge router and I don't even have a router table, but what I do have is my CNC router and I'm getting pretty comfortable with it. So I use that to make my challenge coin rack. With my CNC, I specifically make the groove in the rack. In this video, we're gonna be jumping into Carbide Crate and I'm gonna show you how I set up the vector that is going to be the groove. And I'm also gonna show you how to set up the tool pass. If you are getting value out of this channel, and you are liking the content, make sure to leave me a comment in the comment section below. It does help with the algorithm. Also, if you like, please go ahead and subscribe and like the video. I appreciate you guys and let's go ahead and jump into it. Into Carbide Create. I'm not gonna go into the details on how I carve my stars or the logos. I've, it's just basically rinse and repeat on most of these you know, my other flag videos, you'll see the settings and, and just the process that I go through. What I do want to focus on is how I create the groove within a rack or a shelf in which the coins are going to sit in. So this vector here, this, or I'm sorry, this grid here is the size of a rack. It's going to be the size of the rack. And then also within the rack is the vector that is going to become the groove in which the coins sit in. So let me just go ahead and share with you the settings or the sizing of this particular um, rack and also the size of this vector. To show you that, we're going to click on the setup gear over here where we enter our dimensions. And this particular rack that I'm showing you is going to fit on the 12th stripe. It's going to fit on the, the bottom stripe. In this example, it is a small flag and there are going to be three racks. One rack is going to fit within the smaller area or the seven stripes of the union so it's going to be a smaller rack and the last two are going to be larger full-size um, racks i guess you could say i personally don't like my racks to extend the length of the of the stripe itself so it is a little bit shorter and so the dimension that worked for me is 23.3125 and the height of it is 1.0625 i don't have the fractions here i just have them a decimal but typically my small flags extend 24 inches that is why this is 23.3125 if I were to make a small flag, I would just eyeball a size that I think I, my rack would be, and then I would just update the width to, to that size. It's that simple. And once you have the size of the smaller rack, then you'd set up your vector and you just decrease the size here. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK. This is the vector. This is going to be our groove within the rack. So let me show you the dimensions of this. So this is 21.9062. And again, this is all because it's a smaller flag. You guys would have to adjust accordingly to the size of the flag. But I don't like the groove to extend through the rack. I like to have this block here or this stop so that it stops any coin from rolling through. So I like this particular design. So for this particular rack, it's 21.9062 and the height of this vector is 0.35. And once that, once that vector is done, I like to center it within the, the size of the material or the, the grid. So just, you know, it could be out here, have it selected, click on align vectors and then you're going to align it horizontally and vertically and it just centers it within the, the rack. And last thing, let's go ahead and talk about the toolpath. For this particular toolpath, I used a quarter inch end mill. My start depth was zero because it's going to be on the top of the material and the max depth that worked for me is 0 0.150. The plunge and feed rate are 1590 RPM at 18,000. I think this is the default setting. I'm not too sure. Let's go ahead and take a look at a simulation now. All right, you can see here the simulation comes out just as I predicted or as I explained. You have the groove here in the rack and then there is a stop here that allows the coins to stop or does not allow the coins to roll through the rack. I hope that was helpful. Let's go ahead and take a look at some clips now of this actually being built.
Let me pause right here and let me show you how I set my Z0 when carving small text. I like using the paper method. Once I start to feel drag, I slow down and usually raise the tool up slightly, just so that there's a little bit of drag. There is no specific way to do this, there is no formula, so you have to experiment. And the more that you do it, the better you'll become. For example, in retrospect, I should have raised this up at the slowest interval, probably five clicks. With the union carved out, I removed it and sanded the edges. When setting up my X and Y zeros with an end mill, I like to imagine a straight line coming right through the center of the tool. I then align that line to the corner of the material, so my end mill will extend past the material slightly. When setting up my Z0 this time, I go back to the traditional method of setting it when I no longer am able to move the paper, as you can see here. Here are a few clips of the CNC carving the slots into the rack. This was a 13 strip flag, so I held it together with four back strips and used screws and wire for hanging. With the flag set up, I moved on to attaching the racks. First, I torched them to match the stripes. Since this was a small flag, there were three racks on stripes 4, 8, and 12. I like my racks to fit within the stripes of the flag, so you will see that they didn't extend the entire length of the stripes. I simply eyeballed the length of the stripes to my liking. When attaching the stripes, this was a bit tricky until I figured out what worked for me. For the small stripe, I found the placement location that I liked and then secured the stripe with my hand while I secured the stripe to the flag with brad nails from underneath. Just take your time and make sure you aim right into the rack strip from underneath and make sure your hand is out of the way. Once I had this first brad nail in, I moved down the rack. For the longer stripes, I ended up using clamps to secure the rack strips to the flag. This allowed me to put brad nails at each end and then move toward the center. I also was able to get my hands out of the way. With the racks now attached, I stained the edges of the union and torched them to dry faster. Once dried, I used some spray polyurethane to seal the flag. Here's the final product. What do you think?